Hi, I am Dr. Alice, Associate Professor in Microbiology and in today's lecture, I will be talking about Clostridium difficile. So, in this lecture, we will be covering a brief introduction about the genus Clostridium, the morphology of Clostridium difficile, pathogenesis, its clinical manifestations, its laboratory diagnosis, treatment and prophylaxis. Now, coming to this genus Clostridium, it has got a few specific or significant characteristics. So, what are those? They are gram positive bacilli, they are anaerobes, they form spores and the spores will be wider when compared to that of the bacillary bodies. See, you can see here, so they produce bulging spores and this gives you the typical spindle shape. So, cluster means spindle and that's why uh, this is called as clostridium. And the medium that we use to cultivate uh, these uh, bacteria is Robertson's cooked meat medium, uh, which has meat particles. And uh, uh, based on the compound that it uh, uses, they are classified into sacrolytic bacteria and proteolytic bacteria. So, those bacteria which act on the carbohydrates, they turn the meat into pink color and they are called as sacrolytic bacteria. And some species of Clostridia, they act on the proteins that is present in the meat and they are called as proteolytic bacteria. Being said, there are some exceptions. Some Clostridia, uh, they form spores rarely. Uh, example is perfringens. They produce spores, but uh, you can uh, rarely appreciate them. And Clostridium ramosum. And then some of these uh, species are arrow tolerant. They can tolerate little amount of oxygen, uh, which includes Clostridium tertium, Clostridium histolyticum. And some of them are gram negative in nature, or uh, you can say it is gram variable. Uh, example is Clostridium ramosum and Clostridiform. So, coming to the habitat of this genera, there are about 177 species of Clostridium has been defined and they are ubiquitous in nature that is they are present in the soil, sewage as well as in water and they are the part of the normal microbial flora that is they are present in the gastrointestinal tract of both animals and humans and many species of this Clostridia are harmless sap saprophytes, only few species are considered as human pathogens. So, now let us uh, look into the different species of Clostridia which can cause human infection uh, and its manifestations. So, gas gangrene, tetanus, food poisoning and acute uh, colitis or antibiotic associated diarrhea are caused by few species of Clostridia. So, gas gangrene is a polymicrobial infection and this is caused by perfringens septicum novi and histolyticum. Tetanus caused by Clostridium tetani. And some species can also cause food poisoning. Uh, example, Clostridium botulinum causes botulism. And some uh, types of perfringens like type A causes gastroenteritis and type C causes necrotizing enteritis. And Clostridium difficile, it causes acute colitis or antibiotic associated diarrhea. So, in this lecture, we'll be seeing about Clostridium difficile. So, what are the virulence factors uh, that helps these organisms to establish themselves and uh, cause a um, disseminated infection? So, one is they produce spores. So, spores is one of the major factor that helps the bacteria to survive in adverse environmental conditions. So, that's why we appreciate the spores of, spores of Clostridia in the soil, say spores of tetani present in the soil. Um, you now, when they get a favorable environment, uh, they germinate and they can initiate the infection. Second is they can survive in oxygen deprived environment. When it has good nutrition, uh, definitely it can survive in um, such oxygen deprived environment. Third is uh, they produce a lot of toxins. Okay, they produce histolytic toxins, they produce enterotoxins, they produce neurotoxins and some even produce cytotoxins like a Clostridium difficile, it produces cytotoxin. So, now let us move on to a case here. We have a 44 year old woman with invasive carcinoma of the uterine cervix and she underwent laparoscopic uh, radical hysterectomy. She received cefmetasole uh, 1000 mg <coughs> 8 hourly in the course of perioperative management. 
but on post operative day 2 she developed fever and the antibiotic was replaced with cefepirazone sodium or tazobactam sodium 2000 mg 8 hourly on 11th day the patient presented to the hospital with worsening diarrhea that is more than 5 times in 24 hours and stool culture revealed moderate dysbiosis what is your probable diagnosis okay so here a broad spectrum antibiotic is used is after uh, administering it it resulted in diarrhea and also you can appreciate this dysbiosis okay so there is some disturbance in the normal flora so seeing these picture you can say uh, it could be pseudomembranous colitis or antibiotic associated diarrhea because after the initiation of antibiotics she started with worsening diarrhea so clostridium difficile plays a major role uh, in causing pseudomembranous colitis or antibiotic associated diarrhea